Hello and welcome to In The Back Pocket. Gather round is one and done and we've got another round of football coming up. Isaac Smith, Kate McCarthy and Speedball Head. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Nice of you. He's dropped a few of them in the last oh, week. It was a good week for me. It was a great week. I was kissing back. I've never been more popular. But let's get into the footy this weekend. The Premiership odds we kick off with and has it changed? The Giants were the favourites last week and they still are. So it's getting tight at the top. Colin Collingwood did get out to as much as $12. That's where Brisbane are at the moment, and the Cats at $12 without a loss yet, the Geelong Footy Club. Yeah, Geelong were in the 20s only a couple of weeks ago. I feel like they're disrespected slightly. They've got eight games left at home. They play north this week. They're four and zero. They're in a really good spot. Yeah, you look at the two other undefeated teams, Carlton and GWS, they're a lot shorter than Geelong. And if you look at the experience that they've had with winning premierships, I don't know why they're that far out. Coleman middle market as well. So it is tight at the top. You see the top two, Charlie Kerner, Jesse Hogan, Harry Mackay have started the year well. I don't think Jeremy uh, Cameron can win. I think he plays too high to win that award. All the way down to Tommy Hawkins, who's $21, probably looks the value there. And Joe Danaher at 18. Yeah, I, I look, Charlie Kerner's going to be hard to beat. Clearly, and the odds are reflective of that. But Hogan's kicked 16 already, and GWS is going to win a lot of games of football. So what a season it would be, and what a turnaround in his career if he can claim the Coleman. I tracked the Brownlow very closely and I've done this for a couple of seasons now. Here is my Brownlow tracker and Isaac Heaney, I've got voting in every game so far. 13, so he's five votes clear of Connor Rosie um, and Connor Rosie probably should have a three around round four. Are they your so, votes? Uh, they are my <laughs> votes. They're my votes. They are my, my votes. And then what? Zach Merritt at the moment, he's going okay. Matty Rowell, Started the season well, but that is my Brownlow tracker. Isaac Heaney out in front. Yeah, and well, Dacos got off to a hot start last year, didn't he, Brownie? You told me he could almost not lose and then got injured late. So long way to go. A lot can happen, but a good start. For yeah, him. disappointing it was last year for Nick Dacos and David King. But let's talk about something else. <laughs> Melbourne up against the Brisbane Lions. This is a brilliant game and a cracking game on a Thursday night. A battle of two big midfields. Lockie Neal's in there. Christian Petrarca's in there. Clayton Oliver, a bit of a sore hand, so you feel like Chris Petrarca plays more on ball this uh, tonight. Yeah, and he, he did look sore, I guess, the game last week against Port Adelaide. So I think those two there, so Lockie Neal and Christian Petrarca. Christian Petrarca averages 26 against Brisbane, 27 for the season. And Neal averages 26 for the season. Obviously, he had 27 last week being subbed out at three-quarter yeah. time um, and averages 24 against Melbourne. So that 25 sort of... Could be the way for Lockie Neal, I think, against Melbourne, given what he's done previously. Well, one's a finisher and one's a starter. Neal gets the hands mm -hmm. out. Brisbane looked very ordinary without Neal this year as well. So, massive game for them. Looking forward to see what they deliver, and I think they can maybe sneak over the line here. Danaher and Hipwood uh, found some form last week against the Kangaroos. It was a good side to play against. Stephen May, the courageousness of him to play last week. Now, we both had sore ribs leading into the fight and after the fight last week. Imagine <laughs> playing a game of football with those ribs, but he went back with the flight time and time again. And these guys, these two, as good as they are last week, they give up a lot of possessions. Combin had 25 last week, so for me, Stephen May gets a stack of the football, Not plus sure. he takes the kickouts. Courageousness is a word. Isn't it? So, I don't know, I would have thought courage. Yeah, like the courage that he showed. Courageousness. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. Right, we've got the fighter or the scholar. Look, yeah. I, I, I could be wrong. But, Fair enough. But, uh, your point Fair is, enough. is right. He's got smashed ribs and he goes and takes on Taylor Walker. The thing I love about him is not only does he get a whole lot of the footy, as we've seen there, but he also takes the opposition's best forward. Yeah, and you could tell he was sore during that game, especially the first quarter. He warmed up nicely into it. But, yeah, huge lot of courage that he's shown to get back into that. But I think the matchup probably works in his favour. They're very um, Danaher and... And Hipwood centric at the Lions. I think that's something they'll try to change this week, obviously, with the two down there of May and Lever, but I still think you'll get plenty of the footy. All right, so that brings us to On Notice. <laughs> I like it. What a are we doing? I hey. like about that. I've called for it. I've demanded it, and I've got it. So <laughs> they are too reliant on Hipwood and Danaher, but the smalls around them, they're stacked. So McCarthy, Bailey, and the man who's on notice is Cam Rayner. I mean, he's kicked three goals for the year, Cam Rayner. He's an number one pick. It is his seventh year of football. When is it going to emerge that he breaks out and becomes a player that we think he can? And I thought that had happened in the final series against Port Adelaide last year. It was just enormous single-handedly, you know, almost lit the fire for, for Brisbane in that game. But I haven't seen enough of it. So it is now his time to actually break out and really rip this game apart. If I was him, I'd go and watch Jordan to go eclipse. 
the way he improved his game, he was that just forward that had impact on the game. But now he can go all across the field and impact the ground. Paul Petrarca. Yeah, yeah, and, they've, and they've, he's got those traits. I'm just not sure he's got the tank. I don't that think they they've used have. him through the middle as much as they did last year either. In that game against Port, went into a lot of centre bounce mm. clearances. They haven't used him in that that way this year so far. And I'm with you. I think that's what the missing link is. Put him through there. Get him around the footy. Don't worry about Charlie Cameron and McCarthy. They do their work in the forward line. Mm. But get Cameron up and around the ball and, and get the ball forward. It hurts them that they don't flip the magnets. Yeah. They just put them in their positions at Brisbane and they just leave them there. So Kadeen Coleman off the half-back line and Dane Zorko. So his move to half-back has been a success. His last two weeks have been fantastic. Big numbers. So obviously after the Dockers game, he goes and plays half-back, has 30 and 28. But I reckon it's a bit of a watch this week because I feel like Melbourne are probably the best side with their half-forwards at restricting. So think about Alex Neil Bullen, maybe Sparrow rolls through there. So those players are defensively minded, which might make it hard for Zorko. They're really good defensively. Maybe even someone like Chandler. It's not a direct tag, but any time Zorko is looking to get one around the back like you were very good at doing, you go and, you <laughs> go go. and put a body on him and you don't allow him. around the back. Is that a clip? It felt like a clip to me. Did it very well. The one thing I will say about Zorko though is he will give 2% respect to the half forward at Melbourne. One. One maybe. <laughs> so he will go and play his game and Fagan and the coaches up there would have given him the licence to say mate we want you to generate attack for us and we don't care what you do and we've got Harris Andrews and a few other defenders back there they'll cover your man. A bit of spite in this game what's it like? Well we've seen the Petty and Zorko that they've had barbs and uh, Petty was quite upset in a game at the Gabba and there's a bit of history between these two teams I hope there's a bit of feeling, and I hope Brisbane play like that because their season is genuinely very stagged all over the fall. Correct, and that got a bit uh, frosty as well. So, in terms of rivalries, I think this is good. MCG Brisbane's form there has been questioned. They got to stand up tonight, and they got a massive three weeks. They got Melbourne tonight, Geelong and then GWS. So they have to win two of these three. It is a good one. I'll tell you what, you've been on fire with your same game multis lately. So yeah. kick us off for the weekend. Everybody's just waiting for them. Yeah, so I've gone with the three goal kickers for this week. So I think Zach Bailey will get down there and get amongst the goal kickers. The man that you just mentioned, Neil Bullen, anytime goal scorer. He hasn't been goalless against Brisbane in the past five games. And Lincoln McCarthy, I think with Charlie Cameron not in form, he is the one that's looking up and about and really lively in the Brisbane forward line. And I've got him down for a cheeky two goals. So Good price. it'll give you $8.75 if you get on that one. And make sure you get on it and follow us all on the feed. Yeah, um, absolutely. Where you can see all about same-game multis. I follow this morning because you've been that good. So on the feed, you can just follow Kate and you can just copy a bet straight in. I follow Brownie and I now follow you. You're the only three well, people took, I follow You took that long to there. follow Kate. Yeah, I've yeah, followed you for five weeks. Well, so thanks for that. I just wanted her to prove herself. And then she's done that and she's been on fire. So... Like over Were you one of those guys that never talked to the new draft day <laughs> to improve himself? Or? Yeah, you got to earn the respect. <laughs> I'll tell you what was what is going to be a big game is the Saturday night clash between Port Adelaide and Fremantle Dockers. Both sides game. I thought Fremantle were brilliant last week, not being able to kick enough goals. Soldo going to Port Adelaide has allowed that midfield clearances out of the middle. Ollie Wines comes back. Does that disrupt it? Yeah, well, I think Ollie Wines probably takes Travis Boak's spot if he doesn't get up with that back injury. Boak's been playing on the wing. I don't want to see Wines on the wing. So don't give me any Wines replacing Boat on the wing. He's an inside midfielder, but how does he get back in? Because Willem Drew has taken that spot. But as Rosie Rose on France. If, if I'm a winger at Freo, I want Wines on the wing. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So this is what they did. They absolutely destroyed Essendon. Now, I don't expect this to be the case against Fremantle because they got Jackson and potentially Darcy back in. Sarong, Young and Brayshaw are a, a far superior midfield to what Essendon were. But the ability for those to get on the outside, once they get out there with the speed that they've got, it's good night. But your point on Soldo is uh, really well made, Brownie, because you can see the contest that he makes in here, and they didn't have that last year with Lysette. So their recruits have been pretty good. I think Radicalia has his brain fades, but has been solid. Zerk Thatcher's surprise, he's been excellent. And Soldo in the ruck has given them something. You'd have to say that Port Adelaide have recruited in the last three or four years better than any other club. Getting Rioli in as a small forward, that was a great get out of West Coast. And then the three or four they added over the offseason. Well, Francis helps. Yeah, that's a nice little one as well. Hey, so Sean Darcy comes back. I've been backing Luke Jackson for disposals. That's what he's been doing in the ruck. So it might be goal scoring this week for Luke Jackson. So there's 24, 23, 21. I don't think he can get those numbers because I feel like they're going to split their time in the ruck. 
Darcy has to play majority ruck. If they're both in there, Luke Jackson, does he become a second on ball? I'm not sure, but I'd, yeah. I'd be leaning away from disposal for Jackson this week. This is a real headache, I think, now for Fremantle. They thought that they had two probably of the best that they could and were going to work them through and leave Jackson forward, give Darcy a majority of the ruck time. But it's, it has been like the Grundy Gorn experiment now mm. that they've seen one own the position. They've really excelled with just Luke Jackson there. So what do they do? I'm really excited to see how they solve this problem and where it looks like it's going from here on. It's got to be forward for well, Jackson. It has, it has to, to be. be because their forward line is a miss, a mess. I said a miss. <laughs> I'm say it's miss. One there. But it's both. <laughs> yeah. He hasn't got going after 41 goals last year. Tabena, meh. And yeah. Tracy is a is a is a good is a good. That's how he plays. It's, I think it's I think it's a great problem to have the to Darcy <laughs> the Darcy Jackson, and the beauty is they've signed Jack uh, Darcy to 2030. So was it a good problem to have? Well, if it doesn't work, you own the commodity, so you can trade him. And everyone's always after what Ruckman. He, what if he says I don't want to get traded? I'm well, really happy with him. I've got seven years. It does. It's opening up and it's easier, but. Jackson's a unicorn. He's like Mark Blitzarves. You can put him inside mid. You can put him centre forward. You can put him in the ruck. You could probably even a put him in the mythical beast. Wing. Yeah, mythical. Mm. He's oh, got Isaac, one horn. He's a, he's a, he's a <laughs> ruckman. Okay, he's a he's a ruckman. Yeah, That's but sometimes to win to win premierships, Kane, you don't necessarily play in your preferred position. Okay. Ah, the old unicorn. Hey. So <laughs> as I always say, the trend is your friend, and the trend right now is the kickouts and easy possessions for players. Have a look at Luke Ryan. Eight kickouts last week for eight play ons. hundred percent of the time. So That's eight free kicks. If you're backing for 20, you're halfway there almost. Sheasel gave up one. Not sure about these players that don't play on uh, for a start. <laughs> Nick Blakey, that's the first one in about 500 kickouts you've had since your career started. Don't don't continue to do that. But if you're not backing these players, you're not following the trend and you need to back them. Yeah, it's free disposals. Free disposals <laughs> it is. Certainly it is. Okay, so that is that game. We're going to preview the big Friday night game, the Western Bulldogs up against the Bombers. That's next. Find us off, Kate, with a good same-game multi for the weekend. Yeah, so I've gone with the man that you just mentioned, Max Gorn, 15-plus. Matt Crouch, 25 disposal. He gets a lot of the footy, so I think he should be good for that. Cosie Pickett, I think he's in great goal-kicking form at the moment. And Josh Rochelle, I think any time goal scorer, I think he's good for a goal um, in that game as well. Kate has been in ripping form of the same game multis. You can follow her, you can follow any of us on the feed. Very easy to go in and then copy the bet. But uh, I tell you what, you're just putting us to shame at the moment. Yeah, I put that together myself as well. <laughs> um, very good work. But, Best um, thing about that vision is I think Kane's chair was lowered a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's talk about Friday night. So it is the Western Bulldogs up against the Bombers and we're hearing a lot about the Essendon edge at the moment. Didn't see the edge last It was more like a more like a love handle last oh, week. There was no edge to it, it at all. Blunt butter knife, wasn't yeah. it, last week? And the Western Bulldogs on this ground, they're a different proposition at Marvel. They play it so well. They move the ball really quickly and their forward line looks a lot more dangerous under the roof. So I suspect they'll kick a big score and... I don't think the edge will be back again this week. So let's have a look at the Bombers' chances to make the top eight. So they're out to $4.20. I think they're about a little bit over $2 at the start of the season. There were some high hopes for them, but at the moment, $4.20. But they're a side that you don't know what you're going to get. So they could come out, they could blow the dogs away, or they could lose by 10 goals themselves. As a punter, it's a nightmare club to back. Yeah, they are. I think both of these clubs are a bit of a nightmare to yeah. back because week in, week out, they dish mm. up something completely different. I think... The Bulldogs last week, it was a real test for them against Geelong and I sort of marked it down as one where we were going to find out what we could about um, the Bulldogs and they played so well, I thought. I thought they competed all the way to the end. Arguably could have won at different times but Geelong just a bit too strong but if they turn up the way that they tend to against teams that are maybe their equal or a little bit less, it's a real danger game for the Bulldogs but the Bombers are the same. The only thing I will say is Marvel Stadium's different football. And Essendon seem to play better football at Marvel Stadium. It suits their makeup a little bit better. So, yeah, it's a toss of the coin, this one. So two things collide this week. Zach Merritt's form and the fact that the Western Bulldogs don't tag either, which allows a lot of ball through the middle. So that's what he's done so far this year. I mean, he's a pretty small price to go 25-plus, but it's not bad to go into your same-game moldies to boost it up. But at 30-plus, $1.65 is still pretty short, but that's one that you'd look at for your same-game moldies. Zach Merritt with no tag yeah, this week. Don't mind him at 30-plus, no Archie Perk. 
Perkins, Durham potentially coming back from that concussion, but there's no one really in there to take those numbers off him. Parrish and Merritt will get a stack of it. Setterfield not playing as well. So Essendon's midfield has been decimated. No shield there still. So he's the one, and they probably need him to get 30-plus to have any hope to win this game. So we thought that the Bombers weren't going to be able to handle the tools this season with players going out of the side. Obviously, they have Mackay coming back in, but they've handled the tools. It's been the smaller players, the general forwards, that have really bothered them. So you look at Cody Waitman, who's been in sparkling form so far this season, and that's what he's done the last four games against the Bombers. And I think he's in the best form of his career at the moment. He's learned how to work. He's learned how to get the ball in the air and on the ground, and he's getting his goals in multiple ways at the moment. I reckon he's uh, due for, well, he's having a breakout year. And when you're looking, and often it's hard in all Australian meetings to select those small fours. Charlie Cameron's probably had the position on it, but if he keeps going like this, look out. He was taken with pick 15 in 2019. Cozzy Pickett was taken with pick 12. Question for you, who would you take now? Okay. Cozzy Pickett. Okay, well... I, I, like, I like Pickett. I like his aggression. I like his edge. And that's taking nothing away from Cody Waitman, but... I'm a big I think fan. that's the right answer, but he does average 1.75 goals a game. Pickett's just about 1.4. Oh, so I he... like Waitman. I like his blonde hair. I like how he's a bit leery. Yeah, well, that's I you. I do like that. <laughs> I, like, I like them both, he to be play, honest. Play but you, you're, you're, you're taking Pickett? <laughs> I think I'd... Are you taking question without notice, obviously? He had to answer. I'm going to take Cody Waitman because I've been told that many times that him and I look like twins. So <laughs> <laughs> I have to stick with my man. <laughs> Good answer. I do the half up, half down. Oh, Kate play. Waitman. But also, I would like to make the point he's actually younger than me so he looks like me yeah yeah nice. that's so, you know. very nice okay so now uh, let's talk about Sam Darcy Sam Darcy was brilliant last week uh, his dad had a really good crack at him last <laughs> week and then he came out and played some good footy I think the thing with Sam Darcy is people are talking about like it's a breakout game and things he's actually never been able to put consistent football together due to injuries and they're yeah. not injuries of his body letting him down he had a hole in the lung from and a collapsed lung last year that he didn't know about for weeks. He had a little bit of a knee complaint, but he also had a, a small fracture in his jaw. So yep. he's not been able to string mm. consistent games together since he was taken at pick two. And now we've seen Beveridge put a little bit of faith in him, give him a couple of runs at it, and he's been able to repay the faith and he's looking really good. Yeah, and if you like him for four plus, he's going to get a matchup that you would think there's no one that can go with him because Norton's always probably going to get the best one or you, Hagen, and then he's going to get their third one and he's going to have 15 centimetres on the next tallest defender. So yeah, there's some value there. He kicked three last week. See if he can go one better and get some value there. Dogs are pretty good last week, so you're happy with them against the Bombers? Yeah, I am. I just think they've got too many weapons in their side. The midfield was on fire last week. Liver is one of the best midfield games I've ever seen. Like The tenacity that that guy plays with is, is like Jack Biney for me. They're the two most tenacious players. Bont was on fire and I just feel like the forward line hasn't clicked yet. Norton just four goals for the year. Hugo Hagen hasn't hit his straps but at some point that's going to come and I suspect it comes this week. All tipping the dogs? Yeah, but I think it's but. as Essendon will play a lot better than what they did. No start. buts. No, I'm no saying. sitting on the fence. You well, either you like him or you don't. No, you can sit no, you on, can't the fence. Sit on the you fence. You can't sit on the fence. You can't sit in the media, Isaac. <laughs> Luke Darcy is sat on the fence. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's have a look at the next game. It is Gold Coast up against Hawthorne. So Hawthorne were a lot better last week, even though they got 38 points behind. But the Gold Coast Suns put in a great effort with the amount of changes they had in that game against the Giants. Uh, but before we get into that game, let's talk about Kate Rates. Here we go. Cody Waitman. Yeah, <laughs> Cody rates. <laughs> well, the arms have never looked bigger than they have in that. So <laughs> finally got a sting. That's beautiful. Um, Kate rates this week. So looking a little bit, combining this with our value hunters as well. So Blake Hardwick last week to kick three plus goals. He was paying $34. So we had someone get Ooh. on that. He kicked the four. He kicked four in the second half alone. So they, he was the one that they flipped forward. So Sam Mitchell went to him, put him in the forward line. Um, he took seven marks, five of those were inside 50 and basically turned the game on his head. Isaac and I were doing that game and he was our man. We were just watching for the ball to go to him and every single time he delivered. He played so well, but he had this ability, as, as you get from moving from the defense to the forward line, you know to read the footy, so you don't move unnecessarily like some forwards need to or have to yeah. or tend to do when they're leading. So he just watched the ball come in, he read it off the boot, and nine times out of ten he beat his defender to it because he just read it well. And so, he played forward as a junior as well. I think yeah. he kicked 12 goals in a, yeah, in a TAC Cup game, which was pretty good. And he's a good kick. He takes the kick out. So have yes. a look at this. That is a beautiful strike of the football. He, he looked like a forward playing forward and he kicked like a forward. 
the beauty, and we talked about it, he pulled his def- his defender away and created the space, which Hawthorne previously wo- previous weeks haven't looked great at having space to kick into. He was able to create the space for the player to kick into, and then he worked into it, and he, he made uncontested marks in the end. He was really impressive. And we know the Wizard's still out, Wizard Watson, and Bruce. Does he play forward again? Does he have to play Has him? To. Does Sam Mitchell have so. to play him forward? And when he plays forward, you take him out of defence. So uh, they're actually ranked 17 at defending general forwards, Hawthorne. So you look at players, I think this week, like a, a Malcolm Rosas, who's kicked goals in every game this season. So they rank number 17 at defending general forwards. That's not big forwards, that's general forwards. And that's what Rosas has done in his last four games. So I like him. And I found some value for you. This is this, you'll, you'll love this. So Malcolm Rose is two plus goals. That goes into the same game, Moldy, which I'll bring up. But Matty Rowell and Flanders, both in the midfield. Flanders has now gone to half back. So this is what is going on at the moment. Matty Rowell, pretty similar numbers. He's a dollar eighty-five. Very similar numbers for Flanders, and he's twenty-five plus at a dollar thirty-three. And in the press conference, Sam Mitchell did say we might need to make a note of how good he is playing at half back. So the value is with Matty Rowell there. Any take us on that one? Yes. Yes. 100%. Yep. Yeah. Gee, I yeah. didn't even get a chance to say it. No, no, no. That quickly. No, no. <laughs> good, good value for Rao. He's been on fire. One of the most potent mids yeah. that we've seen this year. I think you can trust the Gold Coast midfielders at home. So they're in my same game, Mouldy. So Rao is in there with with the value. Now Randerson, pretty much every week, he's getting around that 30 mark at the moment. Miller and Melka Rosas Jr. rounds us out to $5. Uh, can you see the Hawks playing a game here? I mean, they were very good last they were, week. They were, but I don't think Collingwood were great. I just think Gold Coast... You think they play home. finals too, don't you? I think Gold Coast will play finals with the ease of their draw. They've got the easiest draw of any, any team. Gold Coast for you, Kate? Yeah, Gold Coast for me. And the disappointing thing about Hawthorne is they haven't started well. So if they can start well, we're not sure what they can deliver after the first quarter. And Ginevan, you happy with his form? Yeah, I actually really like what ginevan has been doing. Nice, nice work. OK, everyone on the Gold Coast here, Ginevan fan as well. Plenty more still to come. Three years ago, Isaac Smith, when he left Hawthorne, went to Geelong. Now, I understand that Melbourne was the other club who was strongly interested in him. Now, did you get to sit down and have a presentation with Isaac? And what did it? Was it not good enough? Was it there and not pizzazz in it? Not enough sort of yeah. bickies in the bag? Like, well, what, how, how come you weren't able to get him over the line here? That's a great question, Jade. I've been many last time I was at this for a while now. <laughs> I did say to the boys after that 2021 prelim goodie that they'd cost me a flag and cut my dream of you. Isaac Smith there. So he had the choice between Geelong and Melbourne, so it sets up perfectly for no mates in the media. OK, clear the air. Why Geelong, no Melbourne? Well, Jay-Z threw me under the bus there. I had no idea that was coming, but uh, it turned out to be a pretty good decision. Premiership, yeah, North but, Smith. But why? Why? Mm. It was just the right decision at the time, Nathan. Any other clubs interested at that time? Yeah, there were, yeah. But I wanted to go to a contender and they were the two teams that I genuinely thought were contenders. All right. You just got back from Gather Round. I saw you on Saturday night in reasonably good form. Yeah. Apart from yourself, who was best on ground? I think Dale Thomas. Not only probably out on the streets, he had his wife Natasha there, but uh, also on air. I thought he just... Cleaned everyone. Sharp, was he? Yeah, he was very sharp. He was doing his best work. Kane and I had a fight last week, which I won, obviously. Kane <laughs> so had a few you, fights last week. If you <laughs> were to fight someone from your own Hawthorne days, yeah. who would you think you'd have covered? Oh, God, not many of them. God, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I don't even know who I'd jump in the ring with. All right, we'll leave it there. Great answer. <laughs> hey, Carlton Adelaide, this is a big game because the Blues are flying at the moment, albeit getting over the line just last week, and they've had some close ones up against Adelaide who can't move the ball at all. I worry about Adelaide, the way they move the ball, Carlton to stifle them. Surely they come out this week and show some sort of possession. Have to, Brownie, have to. Been slow, boring, wide, and too easy to defend, as Melbourne found out on Thursday night to kick off gather. And as a player, sometimes there's a game, you sense the enormity of it, and that's got to be this week for Adelaide. So if it's if it's not this week, the season will quickly evaporate. They've got a really difficult draw and the pressure is going to build. So this is the vision that you wanted to highlight. Just watch Melbourne here, how, how they are able to defend this ball movement. And we see this time and time again. Lateral, backwards, wide. 
every Melbourne player in front of where this ball is kicked. Now, the best teams in the comp... But the Melbourne players aren't mo working that hard exactly. either to do this. Yeah, they're just defending it too easily. The best teams, Sydney, Port Adelaide, Geelong, the way they're moving the ball. We're going to see a great kick here, which you highlighted from... Saligo. Saligo into the middle of the ground. And you can see Matt Crouch waving. Don't, That's what they need to do more of. Don't call for the ball if you're then going to go back off your line. Have to and, give that there. not give that to him there. So, it has um, to be a coaching directive, though. And, and what I would argue, I could contradict this a little bit. I don't think Adelaide, and no one thinks Adelaide are playing good footy at the moment, but they had 23 to 28 shots on goal. So Melbourne's only had five extra shots on goal, and Melbourne have got the best team defence in the competition. So that bodes well for Adelaide this week. The other thing I would say is I don't think Colton are playing very good football at the moment. They're winning, which is great for so them. So you give Adelaide a chance. They're not hitting their straps and they're still waiting on Sam Walsh to come back. So whether he comes back this week or not, their best midfielder, who knows? But I feel like Adelaide the last two weeks have started to play a little bit, a little bit better football, and I wouldn't be surprised if they give Carlton a fair run. $7 to make the eight, as we saw. I had, yeah. them, in, I had them in my eight at the start of the year. You didn't, and we've argued about them. Yeah. No, no, chance, no value at $7? Well, I didn't think so pre- uh, the season starting, and they certainly haven't shot any bullets that make yeah. you think that they could now. So he won no. that, he, I lost the fight, and he won that argument. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we, we saw Jake Salego was a great kick into the middle. So he's been the one player that's played more midfield time, and having a look at that kick, they should get him in there more often. So 59% of centre bounces attended. Uh, Rory Laird stepped out for a few. So the more guys like Saligo, Rochelle, Rankin can go in there. So Jake Saligo, he had 27 last week. To do it again, $2.50, it's yeah. a pretty good price. Price, or for a same game multi, the 20 plus I think has to go in. Definitely, and I reckon that percentage only increased because you can't have Berry and Laird and Crouch Just in the midfield at the same time. So he's got a bit of speed, he breaks a tackle, he's a good ball user. Oh, we talk about it all the time. You'd love to see Rankin in there a bit more. You'd love to see Rochelle have a bit of a look because it's been a bit of a pedestrian. Why, why don't they put them in there, well, Rochelle and Rankin? They must love Rankin Ford, and I can understand that because last week he looked like the player that was most dangerous at ground level inside Ford 50. So they think, if we take him out of there, we lose that potency, especially when Fogg... It's only Fogg a two-minute. You put him in there and you do your work. It's similar to what a Jake Stringer, a Tom Papley does it yeah. at Sydney. You, you're not playing up there. You're not running over and over. You do the bounce, you push Even forward. Even like Dustin Martin when he yep. was winning Norm Smith medals every it's year. It's a win-win. He, he was doing the same. I reckon a trend that came out of COVID was with the shorter game, you play your position and you play it to the best of your ability. I reckon we're starting to see the best teams now tinker with that and do these two, three, four-minute spurts. And Adelaide, they've got two of the most skillful players in the competition sitting in their forward line. Get them in the game. Same game multi. Yeah, let's have a look at that, Brownie, because I just think, look look at this. Taylor Ooh. Walker's due under the Big. roof. Under the roof, I think the forwards get uh, a hold of it. Saligo, 25-plus, because he's going to spend just all of his time through the midfield. And Cherry, you can almost rely on him getting 25-plus as well. So some value there, $13. If this comes off... Uh, we're leading with this on the show next week. Absolutely. You can follow that on the feed. Join the feed now and you can explore, copy other pun punters' best, not just ours, but all sorts of punters. So they're all there, uh, racing, sport, and who you're following on the feed. So get on to that. Let's talk about the next game. It is the Giants up against St Kilda. And good luck to the Saints if they can think they can run through the midfield with the Tsunami, led by Whitfield. Now, the Giants... Have, uh, the Saints have given up a lot of numbers to halfback flankers. Think a couple of weeks ago, 44 disposals uh, to Nick Martin. And this guy, I feel like, I'm, I'm starting him at 30. I, I feel like his disposal line should be at 30 this week. What I love about Lockie Whitfield, especially under Kingsley now, is I feel like he had a free license to do whatever he wanted pre-Kingsley. Now it looks like he's locked into his role, but now we're seeing the best of Lockie Whitfield because he starts in a position, he starts on his man, and then he gets mm. to work. See, Brownie loves the kick-outs. I love the one-two, and I reckon he's very good at getting the one-two. Well, he makes the kick-outs and the one-two. And, and then sometimes it's three. And the short handballs. But you want, in saying that and making a joke of it, you want the ball in Lockie Whitfield's hands coming out of their back line. Absolutely. So the trend is your friend, as I always say. Seb Ross, uh, <laughs> centre bounce attendances. So players who play more centre bounce time have got a better chance to get the ball than others, as we know. But 95% centre bounce. He was out of the centre bounces for a long time, but the last few weeks he's been back in there and the results don't lie. Ross, the boss, has put it on his midfield as well. So I'm not sure if he's looking to hit a big free agent at the end of the year or looking to mix a few things up. But he's not pumped with his midfield. Are you worried about the Saints? So, so, so Ross has been in good form, but their midfield still, and they, these types, of, they're very similar, even when Owens well, goes in there. Well, I'm not in love with their list, and I haven't been for yeah. multiple years. I like what they're building. They've got some talent there, but I think Ross, 
especially over the last 18 months, he's really starting to turn the screws and make some decisions. Mm. So Filippo is the one that I think can and has the potential to go to a new level. There's a bit of Marcus Bontempelli about him. So, yeah, second-year play, give him some time, but he's a big body who's got speed and can penetrate with his kick. So a little bit like Rochelle at Adelaide, I'd love to see him spend some more time through the midfield. Ross has been playing Bradley Hill exclusively on the wing the last few weeks, and the results have been Bradley Hill getting a lot more of the footy. It's funny when you play someone in their best position <laughs> that they get the ball, isn't it? Well, and that third quarter on the weekend, V Richmond, he changed the game uh, with some of his uh, abilities and his way to take grass, take the ground. He's a beautiful dis- distributor as well. So, yeah, it is amazing. Is he one of the best runners? you've ever played with Brad Hill in terms of endurance? Uh, no, nah, speed endurance. Right. Not endurance. He blows up quickly. Okay. <laughs> Not speed endurance. Blows up. Okay, Toby Green. Had a quiet start to the year by his standards, but last week, it was a highlight real last week. He kicked the four um, and you feel like, again, maybe Wilkie probably goes to Je- Je- uh, Jesse Hogan. Who does Toby Green get? Yeah, well, that, and that's the thing because their forward line is stacked. Even Brown's been in really good form. Cadman's shown a bit. And we've been waiting for this. Because he did start slowly and they were still winning. You go, well, how's the upside for the Giants yeah. if this guy gets going? Look out. And he got going in a big way. So I don't know if there is a matchup for him. Maybe it's Stocker or someone like that. And uh, good luck to you, Liam, uh, if you're going to try and stop one of the best medium smalls we've seen in a long, long time. The All-Australian captain was on fire. Look at the one-two, give and go, and then bang. Um, so their, their forward line is, is potent, their if, midfield is electric. If and Windhager also... goes to somebody, if he deploys the tag, who is it? Is it a midfielder or is it Lockie Whitfield? Does he play as a small forward on Lockie Whitfield? He's done a good role on Josh Kelly from memory in the past. Kept him to oh, there was a couple of disposals in a half. So maybe Josh Kelly's the one. Josh Kelly's the one. Who would you go with him? Uh, Do you like the tag? If you were coaching, would you deploy the tag? Yeah, I'd deploy the tag. I'd be very much a tag type coach. Whether the tag comes from half fo- half forward or from the wing and you deploy it from there, I'm not sure I'd give up one of my A-grade midfielders to deploy a tag, but I just think coaches these days, they've gone away from it a lot and there's such an asset you can have in using it. It's always the risk, isn't it? If uh, you're punting someone for 20-plus disposal, then they get sat on. Well, that's those games. We're going to have a look at the Sunday doubleheaders up next. Hello and welcome to In The Back Pocket. Isaac Smith, Kate McCarthy, Kane Corns, the Sunday doubleheader. The first one is down at the Cattery, Geelong up against North Melbourne. And first of all, I want to alert you to, and you probably already know, but North Melbourne have had a lot of goals kicked on them lately. <laughs> uh, so let's have a look at what they've been able to do and the players who have kicked goals against them. So Hogan and Riccardi, nine between them. Mackay and Kerno, nine between them. And Danner and Hipwood, uh, obviously a fair amount of goals well, between the them punters. as well. So now you've got Hawkins, you've got Henry, and you've also got Jeremy camera to contend with. It's one of the great opportunities for the punters all year is whoever plays against North Melbourne, you look at the key forwards and you, you probably go, okay, there's an opportunity for them to kick a big score. The only problem here is there's three of them, so which one do you go for? You think I think Ollie Henry. I think he's going to be the one that cashes in. He's paying $4 for that full plus market. So the two of the others, so Cameron and Hawkins, they play further up the ground. Henry last week, he didn't have a, I think he had a goal or two last week, but he had six shots. So I think he's going to be the, the one that cashes in for them. Oliver Henry plays, uh, funny as it seems, closer to goal than actually Tom Hawkins. So he should be good. I like that call. What are you smiling at? Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Charlie Combin played on Joe Danaher. So he's obviously going to have to pick up one of them this week. He went back. He had 25 plus disposal, which was $18 last week. He also had 11 shots on goal against him for those 25 plus disposals. Five goals, four, and a couple of out of bounds on the full. And there's a couple that didn't make it. So it might have been 13 shots, but He's got a big job, probably on Tom Hawkins. Yeah, he does. He's obviously had some struggles, but it's it's not... I know we've seen what he does. We've got his stats, but it's a whole team down at North Melbourne. The defence is just... It, they cannot defend key mm. forwards. We've seen how many we see how many goals they've given up, but they're really struggling against the key forwards. Never take away the psychology of Tom Hawkins here, though. He did not... I don't think he kicked a goal on the weekend Zero. against Western Bulldogs. Four the two weeks before that. And... I'm sure in a team meeting this week, Chris Scott will be saying we are feeding the big fella and we're getting him a big bag this weekend. So he's my pick. Just fill the big ball. Yeah, fill him. In team meetings, did you used to? I heard a rumour that you used to make a (laughs) cricket noise where neither whether Scotty was going too long. I'm not sure. I. Scotty never goes too long in his meetings, Brownie. <laughs> <laughs> he's not your coach anymore. Do that again. How do you take that? Uh, he didn't know it was him. 
<laughs> uh, Grime Myers, is he the best entry inside forward 50 player in the competition? He's because they've also got Mitch Duncan, who's just as good. He's, he's like a trick shot uh, entry. Like he, He's disguised in his ability to trick the defender. So the defender thinks that he's going probably close to the boundary and he can hook it back. And they're on the same page. Watch this with Cameron. The connection here with... Jeremy Cameron, he just knows where it's going. There's a small pocket of space and bang, the forwards would love playing with that guy. Plays as a high half forward, comes up, and if they drop off him, look out like the Western Bulldogs. Not as a high half forward though. I used to run past for the handball receive <laughs> and try and break the pain from 50 and he was always kicking it. But he's as good as there is in the competition and he sees something and as you said, it's like a trick play. He sees it, he knows where he's going, looks the other way, then hooks it back. Well, he's being compared obviously to um, Lionel Messi. Um, we've heard that, <laughs> oh, obviously yes, he the did comparison. Too. Um, but the player that I think he's really similar to is actually Patrick Mahomes in the um, NFL. Oh. So he'll look that way and then he'll hit his wide receiver or a tight end the other way. And Brian Myers does something really similar with his eyes. He'll know his options on his left. As you said, Kane, he'll look right and then he'll hook the kick back. So he really plays some tricks with the defenders with the way that he will look one way and kick the hey, other. Pay packets a tad different. Yeah. Slightly. Brian yeah. Mahomes. <laughs> hey, you've been flying, Kate, and you brought it. You said, I, I, I need all my bets in because I've been flying. You took the Cats. There was a lot off them at the start of the season. You took them to make the eight at the start of the year for two bucks into $1.28. Yeah, I'm a bit embarrassed. There's a bit on today. Um, <laughs> it really pumped me up. So this week will be a horrible week, I reckon. Um, but but yeah, I, I think they're locks. Obviously now they're locks, yeah. I think, to make the top eight. But I thought pre-season and coming into this one, I know that there were no real differences in their list from last year to this year. But Isaac, you've said it yourself. I think last year was a bit of a, an anomaly for the Cats um, coming off that premiership. And I think they're really hitting their straps. Them and Melbourne, for me, are the two best teams in the competition at the moment. They started the year 0-3 last year. They are 4-0 and at the moment. And players like Jack Bowes, more midfield time last week. A lot of centre bounces. I thought it was his best game since coming to the Cats. Well, that's the opportunity for someone like Bowes because the only area of weakness, as we've discussed right throughout the year, is their midfield. And when you have players like Guthrie and Dangerfield out, you need someone to step up. He's played enough footy now, started across half-back, moved to the midfield. He's a big body. He seems like he's got a good tank, Isaac, and he was excellent last week. So really good opportunity for him to be there for the rest of the year. Yeah, it is. And the funny thing, Geelong aren't massive in their midfield. What they are good at is scoring from centre bounce. So when they when they win a set of bounds or they win a clearance, they tend to be quite potent. They just don't win as many as any other team. So if they can break even, then more often they're going to win their games. Is that funny? Well, you said the funny no. Thing. Well, the funny thing is that everyone. Ba- <laughs> the funny thing is that everyone tears apart their midfield at the moment. <laughs> So even though their midfield's getting teared apart and everyone's saying they have to be better, they're actually quite potent from that. So, you know, The funny thing is you, <laughs> funny. you got your same game multi up last week uh, in the North Melbourne game. So here it is, $3.30, Brisbane 25 plus, Brisbane head-to-head, which is you know, about the same thing. Joe Danher, three, and Charlie Cameron, two goals. Charlie Cameron had a goal in the first... 20 seconds, and then Didn't a goal in the last. Then until the last <laughs> quarter, but he's just saying game multi this week. Yeah, I think Tom Hawkins, he won't be happy that he didn't kick a goal last week. He'll be looking for a lot of goals. Jeremy Cameron, I just don't think anyone's going to be able to go with him, even if he plays further up the field. He rips back so hard. And Brad Close, he just always sneaks in for one or two, and I'm not sure they've got a small defender that can go with him. The final game of the round is West Coast up against Richmond. Now, this is a mm. danger game for the Tigers without many key forwards at the hardly any key forwards at the moment. I think West Coast pushed Sydney last week. This is a real danger game. Yeah, so I'm not sure they can win, but if you like the line, he has probably some value there. But they're going to win at least two or three games for the year, um, West Coast. This would be one that they're circling. No Tom Lynch, a lot of other key players for Richmond out. And West Coast, as you said, were good. I thought they were really competitive in the air. They dominated contested marks. Their senior players, Yo, uh, McGovern, and also Kelly in good form. And I think Harley Reid's given them a spark with the, with the jumper pull and kicking his first goal. So... Um, yeah, I think there's a bit to like about West Coast this week. I think if we hadn't seen the game we saw from them last week, it would be a very different conversation. But I was really impressed by how they turned up, how they competed against the Swans for a good three and a bit quarters, to be honest. Mm. I know the Swans ran away with it in the end, but they looked like a very different team. They looked like they, they cracked in a lot more. It was those things that you can't really measure in a football club that they really they wanted to compete. They wanted to put on a better performance. Hadn't won, won a quarter and still between, um, I think, the first quarter of that one they lost, hadn't won a quarter up to that and then ended up going in at half-time with the lead. So I was impressed by them and I think, I think the Lions Can probably the win? way to go. Can they win? 
they think they can. I think they can win. They can win. I, yeah. I've been nothing but impressed with Richmond for every setback they've had, but West Coast could steal this it one. Seems like that, doesn't it? Okay, as I always say, the trend is your friend, and the trend is Ruckman against West Coast. So this is what the Ruckman have done against West Coast this year. So numbers and goals. So Brody Grundy last week, 20 plus disposals. Nan Curvis for 15 plus. I don't often put a Ruckman in there, but 15 plus to go into your same game mold as if he has a breakout game for 20 plus. So I do like Toby Nan Curvis, but probably at the other end, trying to stop those goals is going to be Jeremy McGovern. Now, Richmond's uh, forward half is depleted. It just looks like he's going to mop up everything, and he's been taking the kickouts. He took seven kickouts last week. Yeah, 25 plus is probably the value. I'm not sure he gets to 30. He doesn't happen often, but has been in, in really good form. And these entries here, I think you wanted to highlight just how deep they're trying to kick the ball inside forward 50, which never works. Yeah, there's still a kick away, really, especially that first one. This one's a little bit better, but that that really long, high kick, and especially on a ground like Norwood. Norwood is basically a soccer field. Mm. So they're trying to go long in a place where you're not defending as much of the ground. So that that's a still a kick for that inside 50 there. Hit up a short 45. That person then rolls and goes and gets a one-on-one -on -one rather than a long, high tower McGovern kick. McGovern just wraps him oh, up, doesn't he? If they're going to kick it like that, McGovern is going to have 30-plus. So you spoke about Harley Reid and obviously showing the jumper. I thought that was symbolic of where his head is at. So I thought it was fantastic. Here is the rising star market, 375. I think he's well ahead of George Wardlaw, who's the second favourite right yeah, now. Hasn't even been nominated yet, and he's the favourite. There's his numbers there. So he had 18 disposals last week, career best game, kicked a goal. And once you do get the confidence that you can start racking them up, I, I like him for 20 plus this week. This is the moment, I thought, for a young player. They need some positivity. He sensed that, and he's just won everyone over back in Perth by taking on the jumper, and you can't tackle him. I mean, the amount of broken tackles that he had in this game against a good side, he's going to start to emerge as that confidence grows, and it won't be too far away before he's getting 30-plus. The concern with me is just that 25-plus is he spends a lot of time in the forward line. So. Well, maybe an upset for the West Coast Eagles. We're going to be back next week. Hope everybody backs a winner. What's gambling really costing you? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.